Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. After weeks of testing and talking to the deck's original designer, Steve Moss on Reddit, Reddit hype by the way, I finally have a Tiny Leaders deck tech for you. For those of you who don't know, Tiny Leaders is a relatively new magic format. You can check out the format intro video right here if you don't know what it is. Simply put, it's like Commander, except decks are 50 cards, not 100, and you can't use cards with converted mana costs above 3. Yeah, it's, it's totally a real format, I promise. Anyways, Kami of the Crescent Moon is our tiny leader. Two blue mana for a 1-3 legendary creature spirit. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws a card. In case the card itself isn't enough of a hint for you, we're about to build a mono blue mill tiny leader's deck. Your friends are going to hate the crap out of you. You don't even understand. Let's get right into it. The entire deck is designed to mill your opponent one way or another. The strategy is filled with mill cards thanks to wizards printing so gosh darn many. Brain Freeze, Dampen Thought, Dream Twist, Thought Scour are the mill instants. Storm is certainly relevant when the format doesn't allow big mana cards. It'll be pretty easy to get this copied at least once or twice. Besides that, I'd say the instant mill cards are par for the course. Because why stop there, the sorceries are also chock full of mill powerhouses. Increasing confusion, mind sculpt, and tome scour might not seem like bombs, but remember, these decks are only 50 cards. One tome scour and you just took 10% of their entire deck. Makes mind sculpt look a lot more intimidating, right? Anyways, there are plenty more mill cards when you include permanents. Altar of the Brood mills your opponent every time you play a land or basically anything else that sticks to the board. Howling Mind forces your opponent to go through their deck twice as fast. You don't much care about letting them draw as long as they keep milling. Remember, you've only got to get through 50 cards in this format. Temple Bell is a higher investment than the Mind, but another card per turn seems pretty strong. Moving on to mill enchantments, we start with Jace's Erasure. With cards like Howling Mind, Temple Bell, and the Kami itself, Erasure ensures that your opponent will be milling all game. So you just gave your opponent a ton of cards. Memory Erosion makes each of them hurt. At first they might love the fact that you just gave them a ton of cards. When they realize they have to mill two to play each of them, it's more of a burden than anything else, trust me. As far as mill creatures are concerned, we run three. He Drawn Crab is one of the best turn one plays. No one is going to want to waste removal on this thing, but each turn going by is another landfall trigger and another three cards gone. One of the best cards in the deck for sure. Something a little higher on the power level scale is Jace's Archivist. It is a little clunky, but the ability to windfall on a stick is nothing to underestimate. If you untap with the Archivist, I'm not sure how you lose, honestly. At worst, it's a removal magnet, so at least there's that. The last mill creature is Riddle Keeper. Great against aggressive strategies for a couple reasons. First, it has high toughness, so it'll make a decent blocker. Second, every turn they attack you with anything, you get some mill value. After a while, if you aren't dead, that milling will start to take its toll. I guess you could say that the last mill card in the deck is Jace Bellerin. At least most of the time, you'll be allowing all players to draw because, again, you really need to get those cards out of your opponent's library. This is a good way to do that, plus walkers are real annoying to deal with. The rest of the deck is filled with cards to prevent other decks from killing you before you can mill them out. Bluster, Squall, Cyclonic Rift, Eye of Nowhere, Vidalcan Shackles, all these cards help to hold your opponents back, especially if they're aggro decks. Enchantments and Creature help in the forms of Propaganda, Stasis, and Callous Oppressor extend the length of the game. You are in a deck looking to combo off. You mill them quickly, consistently, and efficiently, but you don't go nuts on turn 3 or anything like that. To make sure you have the answers you need in case the Kami and all of your other card draw doesn't do enough work for you, we run Ancestral Vision, Brainstorm, and Preordain to dig deeper. Counterspell is there because it's Counterspell. High Tide is there to take advantage of your mana base, which we'll talk about in a moment. And Isochron Scepter becomes a stick for a mill spell, control card, or the aforementioned Counterspell. As far as lands are concerned, we pride ourselves on being resilient to land destruction. The deck runs a simple 18 islands. You can add Reliquary Tower if you want to, or Rishadon Port and Maze of Ith if you're made of money, but if you can't, that's okay. The Mono Island plan is a good one. Why not Blue Black? I'll make this simple. I had reservations at first as well. You lose a lot by not splashing, but you gain so much more by being Mono Blue. Not having to worry about color fixing is pretty sweet. It helps out your stasis lock and high tide. 
Also, and this is most important, you get your Kami out on turn two every game with it as your tiny leader. That's reason enough. This thing is insane. From the turn it comes out, it's a nightmare for your opponent. Being able to play this consistently every game on turn two, well worth the mono blue path easily. If you don't have a lot of these cards or you want to make some changes, I do have some suggestions. A few players I've talked to really like the old school Owling Mind deck. If you want to run Ebony Owl Netsuke and Black Vice, you totally can. If you do though, I try to find room for some of these X spells. Prosperity, Sky Scribing, Blue Sun Zenith, and Fascination. Some other spells that are just good that you might want to test with are Mana Breach, Hoodwink, Overburden, and Remand. These are all great cards, but just didn't make the cut. I do have one disclaimer though, and it's why we run Extract in the main deck. Elixir of Immortality is the worst thing to ever happen to this deck ever in the history of ever. The card is a nightmare and just thinking about it makes me want to die. This is why you run Extract, it's pretty much the only reason. The card single-handedly ruins you and there isn't much you can do about it once it's in play, so just get rid of it. Beyond that, however, the deck runs really well and has amazing matchups against most anything. Elves can be a problem sometimes, but even then, the strategy can stand on its own two feet. Here are just some sideboard suggestions. Local metals are all different, so some of these cards won't be good for everyone. Aether Barrier Hose is aggro. Monastery Siege against anything control or temple oriented. Relic of Progenitus and Scrabbling Claws for graveyard based strategies. Stifle and Trickbind for a ton of activated abilities, fetch lands, basically Storm, just bring in both. I must warn you, if you choose to play this deck, other people are not going to like you. This is scarily consistent, hilarious to play, and a lot of players won't even see it coming. Enjoy the fact that Mill can actually be somewhat competitive now, yes, the world we live in. Let me know how you feel about this deck in the comments, and if you have any questions, suggestions, comments, anything at all, leave them below and I'll be around to talk about it. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.